Hi there. So if you want to add some greasy fingerprints to a shiny or glossy object, as you see here, then uh, here's how to do it. All right. So here in Kishet, I have this uh, black plastic bottle with this uh, shiny black plastic material on it. And to uh, add the fingerprints, first step you need to do is to uh, go in the material graph. So right click and go to edit material graph. This shows the uh, setup as it is right now. It's just a plastic material with some noise in the bump uh, just to uh, break up the, uh, the completely smooth surface just a bit. To add in the uh, fingerprint, we need a texture map that we can drag into the roughness channel. Um, so go to the uh, textures library here over in the in the library window and uh, Keyshot comes with a few great ones uh, from the install. So if you search for finger, it will show um, this fingerprint and this fingerprint too down here. I have some others as well that I have bought online, but for now we want to take a look at this fingerprint. Drag it over to the graph and take the uh, the output and drag it into this plus sign down here. So we get the uh, all the options and hit the roughness. Great. So before doing anything else, um, we can see that it has been applied, but it's sort of all over the place. So to better be able to see what we're doing, uh, select the texture and hit C on the keyboard to show the raw color information of that map. So we can see that it's completely black and white uh, with the white fingerprints. If we look at the mapping type over here, we can see that it's set to box and this object is quite cylindric. Let me just change the uh, background color so we better can see that. Go to the environment, settings, color. Boom. All right, so it's a quite cylindrical object so we can change this mapping type to cylinder. And I also want to center it on this part because in this scene I have some other parts as well actually, but they are hidden, but they have, have the same material applied. So to uh, be sure that this map is centered around this um, this model, I select the part over here. Um, now to make it uh, look a bit more correct than it does right now, I hit move texture and you see we get this uh, cylinder around our object showing how this texture is mapped. Um, and we can see that we should probably fit it to the C axis to uh, to make it work. If you're not sure of what axis you need, you can click and try to see what will work best. And we can see that here, uh, this cylinder fits with the, uh, the cylindric object that we have. We can uh, use the arrows here to adjust the, the height, the position of this map. And I can see if I, whoops, not rotate it. If I drag it down here, we can see that the map starts to repeat up here. So to avoid that, I go over to the properties over here and uncheck repeat vertical and repeat horizontal. So we only have this one instance of the map. And if you accidentally rotate your texture all the time and don't need to do that, you can uncheck this rotate um, down here. So you only have the translation sliders. Cool. So if you want to rotate this, uh, let's say we want it like in a 90 degrees angle from what we have here, you shouldn't change it here in the uh, in the mapping, uh, the cylindrical mapping. Um, you see uh, that some weird stuff will happen. So if we undo that, whoops. Let me get back to this, all right. Undo that and uh, instead of doing it there, go down to uh, size and mapping in the properties and rotate the angle UV. And you see that it now rotates a bit better. And if we look at the uh, the texture by hit move texture, we can see what's going on. And uh, we can see that while the uh, texture is being rotated, it's still wrapping around uh, like a cylinder, okay? So that would be the way to do that. Let's uh, stick with something like that. We can rotate it around as well, or use the angle slider up here. And we can also adjust the uh, the size here if we want to. 
to make it uh, fit with the object. I think this is quite cool. Looks good. So when I'm I'm done, or when I'm happy with the placement and size and position and everything, I can hit C on the keyboard again to uh, go back to the normal view of the material. So now we have our fingerprint on the uh, bottle, but there's a few things we can do. Or actually, uh, a single thing that I want to show is um, how you can use the color to number node to adjust the roughness of this bottle uh, and the fingerprint and make it a, maybe a bit less visible. So to do that, I right click on this connection, go to utilities and hit the color to number node. So that will be put in in the middle automatically. Everything is still connected. So I double click on this color to number and uh, what it does is basically you can use it to uh, adjust contrast and brightness of your maps. Um, input from and input to, you can use to adjust the contrast of your, your map. Um, if we hit C on the keyboard, there's not too much to see in this um, specific map, but if we drag this one up, what is already dark will get darker and the input to will make what is light already lighter. Okay, but what we need here is to make the um, the black more gray to make uh, the bottle a bit rough. So if we uh, hit C on the keyboard again, we can see that as we increase this one, the bottle will get more and more rough. The reflection starts to get blurred out. Okay, and uh, in the same way, we can use this output too to make the bright colors less bright. Uh, and that will decrease the visibility of this uh, fingerprint. So I like to keep effects like this quite subtle. So uh, maybe something like this could be quite cool for for a full shot, for example. Um, it's nice to have these details not too visible, but still having them there to add details to the scene. All right, so that concludes this tutorial and I hope you learned something from it. And uh, until next time, take care.